What's up, guys? Welcome to the September 2017 live sale. So we are a little bit early, about five minutes early. It's 1.55 p.m. here. We're scheduled technically at 2 p.m. So I'm just here to do a little bit of bookkeeping, making sure that all the devices are working properly. Usually something goes wrong along the way. So if you could, in chat, let me know if you guys can hear me okay or if I have to turn something up, turn something down. Just let me know. I don't know what it sounds like on your end, but there might be a little bit more background noise than normal because it is every bit of 90 something degrees today. It's unseasonably warm and so um, pretty much all the fans and everything in the greenhouse are blowing pretty strong right now. So you might be hearing some of that in the background. Hopefully you don't. Hopefully it's no big deal at all. But fair warning. Taking a look at chat here, audio is fine, thank you guys. So let's see, who is here helping out today? So we have Michael operating the camera, and Ben, who you see in chat here, is the other guy. So I'm going to make Tech Gear Talk a moderator. That's my friend, uh, that's my friend Sigi, and I don't know why he's in chat today. It's kind of a big day for him, but he is here, so welcome. <clears throat> All right. Is there any news going on here that's, that's worth mentioning? Not so much. It's been quite a long time since we've done, it feels like a long time since we've done one of these live sales, but it really has only been about 30 days. I've just... There's been so much, I guess, just busy activity here that uh, time tends to time tends to fly. So, for the folks that are new to how all of this works, I've kind of put the a general outline of how a typical live sale goes. To to purchase corals, you have to do so at TitleGardens.com. There is a link for the live sale in the top left. It's a blinking red dot. Go ahead and click on that, and then you'll see a bunch of items down below, all numbered items, and there should be something in the neighborhood of 200 and some. Uh, it'll take us roughly three hours or so to get through it all, and yeah, just put it in your shopping cart, check out. This is for the US only. Unfortunately, we do not ship overseas, and shipping is a flat rate $39.99 and free for orders over $250. Now, to actually get the item, you have to complete the checkout process. Just having it in your cart doesn't really do a whole lot. So it's okay to check out multiple times. If you're going to do that, select local pickup slash live sale so you're not charged shipping for every single time you do it. And at the end, either make sure you have one instance of shipping or if it's over 250, don't worry about it. And af afterwards, um, we'll combine everything nicely and then we'll send it off to you. Uh, just so you know, uh, the, the items will be available for a few days after the live portion of this show is over. Uh, the live portion is mainly for uh, you know, folks to chime in and we can all just sit and chat a bit. So thank you guys. Hello from Poland, zoanthids.pl. Hello. Welcome everybody. Lawson, hey, how's it going? So Lawson and uh, his wife Suzanne and I are actually looking forward to, to doing another vacation together. <laughs> so, yeah. I'm glad you guys could make it as well onto the show. Alrighty. Um, I have to say my quick shout out. I'll, I'll do this a couple of times, but to the Patreon crowd. Patreon.com slash Title Gardens if you would like to contribute and support this channel. Obviously, if you just wanted to purchase coral to support the channel, that's perfectly acceptable too. But these guys have donated over $5, and so they get a shout out personally. So thank you very much, Phil, Mark, Robert, Steve, Ryan, Dave, Nate, Nancy, Jeff, Samuel, Matthew, Mark, and Travis. And Travis is the newest addition. So thank you guys very much. Alrighty. It's basically time. So Hopefully all the emails have gone out and everything and we can start in on the first coral, which is this red ring Indonesian trachea. We're going to spend roughly 
30-ish seconds on each one of these. We're going to be speeding along quite a bit. I will try to get uh, as many questions answered as I can, um, but I do know that things can speed by. And we're in a 30 second delay. That's just kind of how YouTube Live works. So I might be talking about answering questions on, on past corals. It's kind of like that. Also, you see that the, the light kind of changes. That is uh, Michael shining a, an LED flashlight at the corals to kind of give you an idea of different types of lighting. We're currently using a lot of ATI uh, fluorescents, and those don't really bring out a ton of actinic. So that just gives you like another look at it. All right, and I will try to, to answer as many questions as I can reasonably see as we go here. Okay, so Jake Andrad is asking, hey, just wondering how long it takes for bleached coral to get its zooxanthellae back. It could be, it's, it's highly variable, obviously. If everything goes perfectly, it shouldn't take more than a couple weeks, but oftentimes the conditions that led it to bleach in the first place oftentimes aren't handled in that, in the, that two week period. And best case scenario is that it survives period and it gets its zooxanthellae back whenever it does but it could be as fast as two weeks I would say if any of you are wondering it's just water this time no party party fun time there's a beer in, in the freezer but I don't know if I'm gonna be drinking it it's like maybe I should it's like very very hot here okay fan Please, please, frag tanks do better with sand or without? That's a tough question. Um, yeah, like like Ben was just saying in, in chat here, we have both. Um, it's kind of more determinative on, on how you like to do maintenance more than which one's necessarily better. Um, if, I, if I had a choice, I probably would have sand, but then again, there's a lot of benefits doing it either way. So it's kind of like, six of one, half dozen of the other. It, it's going to be a lot of personal preference there. And um, welcome Rico, good to see you. And let's see, blade break. That trachea looks perfect. How large is it? Estimation of its diameter? It's a, like five, six inches at least. Something in that ballpark. Hey, Rico with the $5 super chat. Thanks, man. Thanks for looking out. <laughs> I was just saying uh, that during my last Q&A, somebody uh, donated $5 in super chat for like the first time. And uh, I was like, you were the first guy in like two years to ever donate anything in super chat. So I, I gave him some props. So Rico, you are, you are the second person to ever give me a super chat. chat. So thank you very much. We need to get together again, by the way. Do another collab. Let's see. Joe Valeno, quick question. Just started getting the slime allergy and turn off the lights to stop the growth. Should I do anything else like scrub the rocks? You could. Um, I would, if, if it were me, I would kind of like look at pop, pop, just siphoning it off directly, doing a little bit of water changes, testing the water to see if it, there's any chemistry out of whack. But uh, like usually like the turning off the lights bit tends to be lower on my list of activities. It's not necessarily bad, but it's kind of drastic. Uh, there's a lot of more things you could do on the chemistry end to kind of alleviate that problem. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, type 40. Yeah, he, he was the first. He's number one. <laughs> Thank you very much. So uh, the entire first grouping of these corals is mainly going to focus on zoanthids. So be prepared. We're doing a, we're doing a, a heavy dose of zoas to start off this show. We do we we're, we do have a, a lot of LPS and SPS as well coming up later on. Uh, the reason why uh, the zoas in particular are getting focused is because this this system that they're in right now, the zoas in particular are doing well in there, and other corals are like meh. 
they, they kind of like the other tanks better, so we're kind of um, kind of going heavy on the Zoas. Oh dear in pubs, have you ever done a pulsing Xenia only display tank? Um, not on purpose, however I could argue that we have a couple tanks that are a lot more Xenia than anything else. Practically a lot more Xenia than water. It's, it's a very very fast growing coral and it tends to, to like it here towards the back of our greenhouse system here. There's tons of it. Uh, Tattoo Dancer 91 do you keep your spare unused frag plugs in a running tank? Uh, no, we, we have it dry and a big reason behind that is that there are, you, you kind of have to have dry plugs it just in our experience to actually do a lot of the propagation like the glues and stuff like that don't stick that well to, to wet stuff so yeah when you kind of look at it that way we just have like this arsenal of, of dry stuff now we do soak everything that comes in in, in RO water to see if there's any contaminants and, and hopefully that all rinses out everything is supposed to be pre-rinsed when we get it but realistically speaking who knows if it was it's maybe it could have just been marketing I don't know so we we soak everything dry it off and then use it Jeremy's Spittery. My frogs in acro deploys filaments every time I feed it. Is that a good sign? I think it is. Um, w when we started to, to feed with, uh, what do you call it, with rotifers and cyclopes, we noticed that a, a lot of our, AK our acros did the same. Let's see, uh, skimmer recommendation. Yeah, um, I think as long as you end up with a half decent quality skimmer, you're gonna be fine. What's probably more important than just a, a random skimmer brand recommendation, it's a maintenance schedule on the equipment. So be sure to, to get back in there, take a look at that pump, clean it out, clean out the, 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 the cylinder, all of that. So, I mean, you can take the, the, the best skimmer in the world, and if you just neglect the heck out of it, it's not going to skim that well over time. So, halfway decent skimmer of any kind, it'll work pretty well, as long as it's sized appropriately. And then just be sure to, to stick with a good maintenance regimen, because it is really easy to just kind of have that in, in, in the background and just ignore it. Who comes up with... Uh, names like Fiji, Rainbow, and Vampire and Drag. I think that we those names came from Zoanthid ID. That's a website. I don't know how active that website is anymore, but that's where we came up. We didn't come up with them. That's where we looked them up from. There's, I would say that there's less than 10% of the corals that we've named. I think that for the most part, we scour the internet looking for other people's names. Okay. Carpet anemones can be propagated like bubble tip anemones. Do you propagate any anemones? Um, depends on what kind of carpet. So, like uh, mini, like mini maxi carpets can be propagated. You can cut them in half. However, large like Hadonai carpets, um, no, you can't really cut those. You'll just end up killing it. Jerome. Okay. Yeah, it's always hard to, to tell, like, uh, pronunciation of names that I see on, on the internet, especially if it's, if it's a, if in, in, from a different country. It's like, boy, that could be anything. Because <laughs> there used to be, like, a baseball player that played for a local club here, and his name is spelled just like yours, but it's, he was Jeremy Burnitz. So that's why I was kind of going with that, I guess. Um, wouldn't an oversized skimmer at a certain level start adding in contaminants from the air into the water? Very unlikely. I think that if you have contaminants in the air, there's plenty of other opportunities to get into your water, like the entire surface area of the tank. So, as far as the coral names, yeah, like as Type 40 was saying, 
um, a lot of times it's like personally I don't really get anything from the marketing aspect of it as in like oh I want that because of a certain name but I do find it a lot easier for um, identification purposes because nobody really I mean, there's no scientific literature that's going to name any of these corals. It might be like a serial number at best, right? And there's really not a whole lot of activity going on. Like, even like the the, the most cutting edge genetic research and stuff like that, they're not they're not slapping names on a, a ton of these these zoas like this. So sometimes when you say I'm looking for an eagle eye, I know exactly what that is. If somebody was looking for a, how about like something like this, a yellow face, orange skirt, a little bit of purple right before the tentacles. Um, dude, I have no idea what you're talking about. If you're asking for Mandarin Zoas, it's like, okay, I can, I might have a mental picture. And if I don't have a mental picture, I have Google image search. I suppose you could type in the description and, and, and find something close, but just having like a trade name helps in that regard. Let's see. Is there a difference between dosing supplements versus feeding coral with fuel or reef foods? Um, kind of different. In, in one sense you are with reef foods, you're, you're directly feeding the coral, whereas supplementation is more about maintaining chemistry. A little bit different, I would say. What's the, oh, so Adrian Fang, what's the best epoxy putty to use underwater for attaching frags to rock? I'm finding super glue being a pain to use underwater. Yeah, so super glue, not the best thing to be using underwater. Uh, I agree. So if you're using super glue, I try to glue it to a dry piece of rock outside of the tank, then set it back in. But if, if you're looking for epoxy, they're kind of all very, very similar. I wouldn't put, say that I found one that I loved more than another. We've used stuff by Ocean's Wonders, we've stuff by, um, is it Instant Ocean that makes one? I think they make a stick. But it's, it's, it's all essentially the, the, the same sort of two-part epoxy. Geisman, DD Geisman. A few different types. Is anyone selling a good skimmer for a reasonable price? You can check a bunch of different uh, message boards, things of that sort, the classified section. Now I do have to warn you that finding a skimmer for a decent price, you may find something. However, the thing that I would worry about is the pumps on these things aren't forever. So it's not in focus. There you go. Um, the one thing that you kind of have to, to remember is that the pumps on these things they have a finite lifespan. If you're buying a used skimmer, you're already cutting into like possibly years already into the life of that pump. And when it comes time to replace that pump, you might be paying the entire cost of a skimmer again, assuming you get it used. It's not uncommon for a skimmer pump to be $250, for example, especially if you're paying retail, which I'm assuming most, most folks in chat are. Oh wait, so my bad. The, the previous one was number 14, right? This is when I went, wait, when I got back off sorry. The cat, we went to 15. Okay, you need to tell me that. Sorry about that. <laughs> All right, sorry. and then, okay, sorry, that's number 15. Sorry for the confusion, fellas. Then number 16 are these guys. All right. Okay. Uh, let's see, is it necessary to feed torches, hammers, torches, frog spawn? Not really. You can, it's not that easy. They're not exactly great eaters. So, yeah, I, would, I wouldn't make a huge effort to. It might be kind of, um, kind of counterproductive. Uh, Jake, and Jake and Draw, do you need to dose even if you do 50% water changes every week in a 30 gallon mixed reef? 
I would be inclined to say no. However, a good way to, to know for sure is to, to do some frequent water testing at least once every two weeks to make sure that there's stuff that's not uh, somehow out of whack. Uh, hi Than, have you tried Refix Thermal Polymer Glue? It works great, it's non-toxic, can be reused, thrown hot water, soft as it. So, okay, if you would have asked me this question two weeks ago, I would have had no clue what you're talking about. But I actually saw this stuff. Um, my friend Will was using it in his tank, and he, he was using the Aquaforest brand, and he liked it quite a lot. It looked interesting. Um, yeah, it looks like this. It looks like uh, white plastic, and I guess it it eventually hardens and coralline just grows right over it. it Look neat. I haven't used it yet though. So Jerome, sorry to repeat the question. Would you say there's a least difficult acro, most difficult? Uh, not necessarily. I, I mean, I've I've. Even so, we, we've we've killed the easiest, quote unquote, easiest types, and we've also kept alive the hardest types, quote unquote. It, it's it's going to be a lot more to do with just your tank than it is going to be with with the strain of Acropora. You're if you're successful keeping the easiest ones, chances are you're probably going to be successful more or less across the board. If you're if you're killing the the, the most difficult ones. Chances are you're going to struggle with other ones too. So, uh, then again, I'm not like Mr. Super Acro Expert either. I could be very wrong about that, but that's just been my experience anyway. Okay, Tattooed Dancer. Yes, your A can will grow and just continue to grow on the plug but just larger and eventually might stick to a rock or something like that as it as it grows uh, type 40 do you like Red Sea products we don't currently use any Red Sea products I don't think test kits we use Red Sea test kits oh yeah but we've only used that like once though I mean, typically we use like Sailor test kits, but the Red Sea test kit I do recall was pretty pretty nice. We don't do any of the dosing or anything like that. We don't use the salt. So hey, Olga. Long time. Long time person in chat, I guess. A veteran of the live shows. All right. I'm I just want to check something real quick just to see how many folks are actually here. Okay. Nice. What fish do you think would go well with pulsing Xenia? 55 gallon tank and the biggest fish would be a coal tank. A lot of options there really. I mean nothing too huge because we are talking about a 55. But you could, you could go in a lot of directions. I mean e even uh, cor like fish that mess with corals, they don't really mess with Xenia typically. <clears throat> have you ever been diving in the Mediterranean? I don't think I've ever been to the Mediterranean period. I would like to. You know, it's I, I've been saying this for if you if you've kind of followed this show, I think that every single show I I, I say I want to visit Europe because I haven't been there in so long. I mean, it's it's basically high school was the last time that. 
I had gone. So that's we're talking like close to 20 something years now, 25 years perhaps. It is time that I made a trip out out that way. And I want to dive in the Mediterranean. I want to dive in the Red Sea. A lot of stuff that I'd like to do. And there's a ton of stuff, obviously, in the continent that I'd like to do. And so, yeah, we can set up meet and greets and everything like that. But I'd have to spend quite a long time out there to see all the things I want to do. Okay. Hammy Jammin, have you ever dealt with dinoflagellates? Nothing too serious. Uh, usually it's just early tank syndrome type stuff where you kind of get like a, a nuisance bloom of it and then it kind of goes away suddenly. So outside of that, not, not too much. I mean, occasionally we get blooms of, of random stuff just because of the, of the seasonality in a greenhouse. But nothing catastrophic to the point where we would ever consider like taking down a system or anything like that. Okay. Yeah. What's the benefit of egg crate? Yeah. Just as as Ben said, it's uh, it's very convenient in the sense that it fits uh, frag plugs very nicely. Um, it's also it's inexpensive. It's easy. It's it's not super easy to clean, but it's kind of easy to clean, and it's cheap enough that it gets if it gets bad enough, you can just replace the whole thing outright. Um, over time, though, we use it less and less and less. Before we made every single tray out of it, and the problem is to to clean it back up later was kind of a pain in the butt. So, just in in the to to save time, we went started going with like more. Uh, more polished acrylic, let's just say. Come to Malta, you'd love it. I bet I would. I bet a lot of people would love coming to Malta, <laughs> hanging out. 24. Uh, Gifson, how can I stop my Moorish idol from nipping on polyps? Unfortunately, those guys, they're kind of coralivores. I mean, that's kind of part of their mainstay diet. So it's it's going to kind of be one or the other. I don't think there is going to be a way to, to stop him from eating corals. And if he stops eating corals, he might not survive otherwise, just from starvation issues. Beck Keys, hi Than from Australia, welcome. What's the best method to fight dinoflagellates? I wouldn't necessarily do anything out of the ordinary to be perfectly honest. Dinoflagellates usually hit some sort of of chemical peak on their own. Like they just like run out of some necessary trace element or something, possibly silicate. And suddenly it'll it's like a problem that will solve itself. It'll just vanish one day, practically overnight. It's like one day you have dinoflagellates, the next day you don't. So I'm Unless it's a catastrophic condition, which, again, I don't have a ton of experience with catastrophic dinoflagellates, but short of that, I don't know if I would really do anything extra special to, to fight them off. Max Reef Space. How's it going, man? Thanks for joining in. is 0.75 ppm high for an SPS dominated tank. 0.75 of what? <laughs> if it's phosphate, kinda high. <clears throat> and welcome from South Africa. Sometimes I wonder what the reefing community is like in some of these other countries. Like I know that like a lot of people um, that are overseas kind of talk about how the, the availability of corals isn't um, isn't quite as good in in their particular countries. But I'm I'm always curious to to hear if there's a lot of just activity in the hobby in general. I mean, because when I went to Japan, um, I was like surprised at how few reef aquariums I've seen. I don't think I've seen a single one. It's, it's almost like only in pictures and things like that. But I never saw it in anybody's home. I never saw it in anybody's business as an ornamental thing. Like, not, none at all. Number 
0.7. Okay, James. What's your opinion on Kessel LEDs? I love the color blending shimmer that a lot of the other LEDs don't do. Um, but the self-shadowing can be an issue. Yeah, I, I think I agree with that. I think that their optics are good at, at blending colors so you don't get like the, I guess, the, the different striations of, of color that I've seen in some other fixtures. But I think that the, um, the shadowing effect is, is a thing in every single fixture I've ever seen that, that has, you know, that does LED, unless you practically cover the entire surface of the water with LED. So if you're looking at kind of like these point source pendant types, you're going you're gonna to always run into that. Is this 28? 28, sorry. Okay. I live in the Dominican and it's hard as hell to get corals in good shape. How are you guys doing with the whole hurricane thing? Was the Dominican, I would assume that the Dominican was pretty heavily hit. I'm surprised that anybody's got reef tanks there right now. Because I know that a lot of the, the, the Caribbean uh, islands and countries got, got pretty blasted by, by possibly two hurricanes now. So available, availability is bad in South Africa, it seems. Terrible in West Wales. I'm thinking of opening a store myself so local people can get healthy livestock. It was that way for a very long time here in the States too. It's not like we've, we've been the land of great coral forever. When I started into this hobby, um, you're very lucky to get green corals. Most corals were brown and the colorful ones were green. And now it's like, green's like the most common color. Twenty-nine. What's the best time of day to feed corals? Honestly, probably in the middle of the night. They, they tend to open up best at that time. However, you can kind of train corals to eat during the day. And so it's, it's usually going to end up whenever it's most convenient for you, not necessarily when it's best for them. Like if you went down and looked at your tank right around 2 a.m., it's going to be looking extremely dif different just by how everything is like super open and all the fish are asleep and, and whatnot and all the different critters that come out at night. And at that time, it's probably the best for, for feeding coral. Not many people in the hobby, but there's a good variety of coral in Kuwait. That's interesting. I wonder um, where those corals come from. I mean, is it, is it Red Sea stuff or is it Indonesian? I'm kind of curious. All right, which media reactor do you prefer for fish only with anemones? Um, to be perfectly honest, I don't have a ton of experience with a lot of different media reactors. I think they're they're all pretty similar um, in terms of quality. I think Geo makes a pretty decent one. Um, yeah, there's probably a bunch. I mean, you're talking basically about a an acrylic cylinder with a pump. So there's not there's only so many ways to to kind of make that fancy. But I would I would lean more towards ones that are easier easier or easiest to service. And the real quality is going to come down to um, the quality of the pump. Number 31. 31. There we go. These are some mellow yellow zoas. Uh, e. N. Reeves, any guests guests today? No. So I was I wanted to get one of my um, one of my friends. He has a YouTube channel uh, that he does like consumer electronics reviews and he, he's got like an up-and-coming growing channel he does great video work and he and I actually met through this hobby we were part of the same reef club at the time 
and just kind of stayed in touch because he's long since been out of the hobby but we've stayed in touch and we're working on a couple of things so i was like you know i'd like to to have him come come on and i was like checking his checking schedules like hey do you think you could make it on like the 23rd come for, hang out for a few hours he's like yeah no i'm getting married that day <laughs> so that 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 bit of scheduling didn't quite work out so well Uh, let's see. Uh, 0.75 parts per million nitrates. 0.75 is like super low, isn't it, Ben? Yeah, that's practically undetectable. No, it's, it's fine. It's fine. If anything, it's like your your borderline starving out corals at that point. Okay. What's the easiest LPS to have in a mainly soft coral tank? You could try some something like tracheophilia. You could try bubble corals like uh, Plerogyra, elegances, that sort of thing. Back keys, Australia. There's a large number, large variety of corals and many types of zoas. I've heard other folks from Australia complain about all the good corals being sent to America or other, or other countries in general. Um, but yeah, it looks like some are, some are staying local. That's good. Indonesia, Fiji, Australia. Okay. Overrated animations. What's your opinion on refroids? Um, not don't really have a strong opinion one way or another. We don't really use it, so hard to say one way or another. Thirty-four berserker zoas. Let's see. Dosing two parts. Should I dose through through the day or nighttime? Not really sure. It matters too much. Slower is better. So if you're if you set your doser to 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 uh, to dose, let's say I don't know, twenty-four times per day. Obviously, you want to space that out as best you can. So day and night, once once every hour or something like that. We don't really dose two part with any kind of doser, so um, it's kind of hard for me to give like very specific recommendations on that. But just make sure you, you dose it in different parts of the tank and in areas of strong flow if you're going to be doing that. You don't want to be dosing the two side by side at the same time, for example. Would you recommend a sump for a 55 gallon? I recommend sumps for everything. There's there's so much flexibility you gain from a sump, uh, just with being able to organize stuff, increasing water volume, being able to shelter stuff away um, that you know might be getting picked on, things like that. There's a lot of flexibility. Uh, so in in general, I, I really like sumps. Chris. Where would you put a blasto? Blastomusa in in what in what we've seen here, they're very light sensitive, and so typically we try to give them as much shade as possible. Shade and feeding tends to, to be the best combination for success there. So Olga, is there any way to lower alkalinity? That's always a, a, a tough one because a lot of times, um, it's very easy to to raise your water chemistry to certain figures if you need to. But if your water chemistry is starting off high, you know how how do you go about reducing it? So sometimes, um, unfortunately, it involves changing salt, which I'm also not a huge fan of. But if your salt salt mix is artificially high and it's still building, that could be an issue. Um, that's why I kind of tend to like salts that have lower values than than what's typical. Um, even though I know that we could use more of that, it's way more difficult to lower stuff. The other option is to pay closer attention to calcium and magnesium. It's possible that one of those two might be too low, and if that's the case, 
raising that while leaving alkalinity alone can taper it down. But it kind of depends. I mean, in, in we're having the exact opposite problem here. We have one particular system where alkalinity drops like a boulder. I mean, it just it's down around three sometimes. It's super ultra ultra low, and then we can dose and dose and dose and. It just it goes up when we dose and comes right crashing back down. May is hair algae okay in a sump? No, not really. Um, you really shouldn't have your hair algae anywhere. Uh, Fazol, do you recommend dosing amino acids? We don't do a lot of that. I know a lot of folks have success doing it with SPS aquariums in particular. I'd say give it a try. A lot of people do have success with it. Um, I think it's fairly safe. It would probably do the corals quite a lot of good, but we pr we just don't have that in our regimen here. Um, max reef space phosphate super low nitrate super low have a bit of green hair algae um, honestly I wouldn't worry too much about that is it the lights unlikely it could even though your water tests low it could be testing low because those things that you're testing for are getting bound up in that hair algae so the test kit is reading low but the system still has it in there it's just bound up in, in possibly the rocks and algae. And as uh, you remove some of that algae over time, it is essentially removing it out of your system. So I would just be more diligent about removing the algae directly and just, it'll, it'll run out of fuel eventually because you, as you said, uh, your water tests out very clean. So it's probably getting fed from the rock itself and it just takes a little while for that to leach out or you're way overdoing it on food or something but yeah that that's kind of the explanation as to why you're you're seeing low chemistry or low nutrient chemistry but algae growth okay regarding sumps what is the best way where did i lose that Best way to use the extra room in sumps? Um, honestly, I would argue that the best way to use completely empty areas of the sump is to leave it empty. Because you never know when you might need that extra space if some crisis were to happen. If you needed to isolate a fish, if you needed to isolate a coral. Things, things happen and sometimes just having that extra bit of flexibility is is all the difference in the world. It'll it'll prevent you from having to set up some sort of hospital tank or something. Uh, my pH is always close to 9. Can't figure out why it's so high. Can you think of a reason? It could be a test kit issue, but 9 isn't crazy high. I mean, I think that you're supposed to have something in the mid-8s anyway. Um, a little bit of extra gas exchange might help. It's not really a huge deal. Forty three. Forty three. So and zoanthids? Okay. I think I caught that typo. Okay. Two large live rock from the sea. Yeah. Yeah, if you have live rock from from the ocean, that'll that'll do it. <laughs> that'll do it. In fact, I'd be very surprised if you didn't have that issue. Uh, Andrew Deutsch, do you see a disadvantage to running multiple tanks off of a giant sump? 
Uh, no. In fact, that's exactly how we do our systems. All of our, well, not all. A single system of ours could be um, five or six different tanks all plumbed into a single sump that regulates temperature, has a protein skimming, has a calcium reactor, all, all manner of things. And then once we want to do maintenance like a water change, we would isolate that single sump, close off all the flow to it, drain the whole thing, spray it out, clean it up, fill it back up with new salt water. And then so essentially all of these tanks then would get a water change. So no, I think it's a perfectly good way to do it. How can I prevent diatom blooms in my tank? Can I brush it off my rocks to clean it? Um, honestly, diatom blooms are, are really a new tank thing. You get it once and then you, it typically just goes away forever. 47. And we're talking a bloom, not just like the nuisance dinoflagellates that end up on your glass every day. The, the daily glass thing, that's, that's just constant maintenance. But like an actual bloom that's causing problems, um, it's more of, it's, it's very rare to not be a early tank thing. Francisco Rivera, how do you feel about the trite method? I haven't used it. Um, I wish that somebody here locally did have a tank using that method that I could see, and then and I could do like a you know a tank review on it because it is intriguing um, and it's certainly got a lot of a lot of press. I probably wouldn't be in a huge hurry to not um, do water changes. Like water changes have bailed me out of many a problem, so. Um, yeah, probably wouldn't work out great for us, but I, I'm sure that, that some other folks have had very, very good success with it. Can you save a bleached anemone? Depends on what kind it is. You might be able to, might not. It's hard to say. Dejoid loins. Yeah, there's a lot of zoas to start off this show. Uh, reason being, this particular tank, the zoas are just doing better than every other type of coral. So we just decided to go kind of heavier with that. There's definitely going to be other types of corals coming up. But yeah, very heavy. Like the first close to 50 corals. And it looks like the, cor the, the zoas are going to go to about 57 are, are all going to be... Zoa still. Hmm. Jerome, are Favites easier to feed than Favia? Um, I'd say they're about the same. They get a lot easier if you um, if you kind of train them to eat. Because a lot of times, like if you get a, a brand new uh, a brand new coral, oftentimes it it doesn't really respond to food very well. But then as it kind of gets more adjusted into your tank, it'll have feeder uh, feeder tentacles extended more, and then at that point you're golden. You can you can pretty much feed all these corals the same. Let's see. Yeah, when zoas, when zoas just simply aren't doing that well, oftentimes it is because something is bothering them. Like these guys are closed up right here, but I think they just might have gotten bumped or something. We can move on to the next one. They're not going to cooperate. 
And we and we've shown you guys a, a couple of different varieties of that. Considering getting a coal tang, any suggestions for feeding? With any kind of tang, the, the, really the best thing you can do is put an algae clip in there for them every day. And then anything else you feed the tank for any of the other inhabitants, uh, the tanks will be pretty happy to nibble on that as well. But I think the, the real key is to always have some fresh nori there available for them. They're pretty much constant herbivores. Tattooed Dancer 91. Discosome is not budding. You can propagate them, uh, but it, I've seen some now that I wouldn't be in a huge hurry to try to propagate. That's kind of the thing. It's like before I would have said, sure, I mean, there's practically no way you could mess it up. But lately there's been some that we've, we've gotten from like Australia that are like amazing, and they don't behave quite like all the other Discosomas I've ever seen. They don't like, they don't really ever drop off babies with longit or with um, pedal laceration. I've never felt comfortable cutting them because they seem to like stress more easily than a, a typical discosoma. So if um, if you're brave, go ahead and try, but I don't know. Try on one that you're not super duper in love with first, I guess. They, they used to be so easy to propagate that people would say stuff like, you can just put it into a blender and just pour it into your tank and you'll get baby mushrooms. Obviously that's probably a bit of an exaggeration, but they, they were considered very easy to propagate. Fifty-six. Okay. So Kent, have you ever had a zoophrag that just gets smaller over time and eventually just goes poof even when all your other zoas are fine? Usually when that happens, it's a pest issue. Typically zoas are, are pretty tolerant of a lot of different tank conditions, but if there's an actual pest eating on it, that's a completely different situation. And oftentimes that pest will isolate down to that to that particular zoanthid first, stick around until it's all done, and then move on to the next one. So that could be the reason why. I would, I would look for, in terms of a common to least common, I would look at zoanthid eating nudibranchs, um, pyramid snails, and potentially some, some spiders, sea spiders. That's also a, a recognition thing. Once you kind of have had experience spotting pests, you can never unsee it. So as soon as you see that type of damage, um, you can be like, oh, instantly I know what the problem is. Okay, the next coral that's going to come up is a pinwheel micromusa. Um, I need to run and use the bathroom real quick. I've been drinking too much of this water. So I'm going to put up the little Patreon thank you page. I will be right back. I'm back. I am back. Okay. Uh, Gifton, can I have a Vlamingi tang in the 80 gallon tank? No. You may not. 
Uh, let's see. What else did I miss? Okay. Well, first off, I'll get the correct label up. This is the Pinwheel Micro Musa Lord. We can hear the P. That's not P. <laughs> you're hearing a. You're hearing a. What do you call it? A hose outside that's spraying down some some plants and stuff. <laughs> that's funny though. Yellow-eyed coal. Oh, no, well, talking about smaller tangs. Yeah. The Stenachetus varieties, so like coal tangs, chevrons, things like that. Those are all good ideas. We heard you peeing. 59. 59. Okay, if you can still hear me peeing, you probably didn't hear me peeing. <laughs> uh. However, I'll let you know, and um, you can try to you, you can try to hear me again. Okay. Uh, have you heard the proposed ban on aquarium fish trade in Hawaii? Uh, yes. I did hear that, um, but not a ton. Hey Ben, can you change the uh, Kelvin on the camera? We're gonna change the Kelvin rating on, on, the, on the camera because it's looking like very, very reddish right now. And that's because when we flip to another aquarium, it has completely different lights on it. But yeah, essentially, um, as far as like the aquarium ban goes, there's a lot of activity in Hawaii that's trying to shut down the coral trade. Like that's been an ongoing thing for 20 years. See, D did, I st did I stop going to the bathroom? Did I stop peeing? <laughs> Uh, Than, I've seen some people keep gem tanks in 29 gallons, yet the specifications for the tank size is 90 or 100. How do people uh, keep them thriving? They don't. A 29 gallon tank is a terrible size tang. Tank for a tang. How long does it really take to cycle your reef aquarium? You can take a good long time or you can do it more quickly. Kind of depends. We tend to be a little bit more conservative here with it. We like to wait at least a couple months. Flower pots, easy to maintain or nah? It really depends on which kind you end up with because there are certain varieties, certain species that are very tricky to keep. And then there's others that are super easy. Kind of depends. We have one called like a Harlequin Cephastria that we've had for years. Okay. Yeah. Hold on. I need to fiddle with the camera. It means it means bulb. Okay, better. Hey, got another got another super chat. Thank you so much, Dominic. So you're the third person to ever give me a super chat donation. What kind of ragalive would be best for a twenty gallon reef tank? Thanks for the a ragalive. Not. 100% sure what that even is. I 
called? I'm, let me do a quick Dr. Google search here. Aragali. Oh, okay. Yes, it is. Um, I don't know how great any kind of bacterial loaded sand is going to be, to be perfectly honest. Um, in the past, what we just did here was just get raw sand and eventually it turns into live sand. Because the easiest thing to, to introduce is going to be the bacteria. Um, and I don't know how well they survive long term in packaging and transport, things like that. Hmm. If you like the product, cool. I wouldn't be in a huge hurry to pay a huge premium for that particular aspect of it, though. But if you like the appearance of the sand, uh, um, there, I'm sure that like, uh, 62. like if you like the, like the pink Fiji or the black or whatever, I mean that's cool. The the bacterial loading of it less my thing, I guess. Scott Lopez. Have you tried fluconazole in a quarantine system for coral frags? I have not tried that. It's uh, using antibiotics is getting more popular. Um, we haven't messed with it too much though. DJ Loins, Ben broke the camera. <laughs> well, in, in fairness, like these guys don't exactly use the, use this camera very often. But I guess technically I don't either nowadays. We're using the C100 right now. This is not the C200. The C200 probably wouldn't even work out here right now. It has like it has thermal management problems, so it can overheat. Um, and in a 90 degree day like this, it's probably not loving it. Thinking of two adult emperor angels in a one in a thousand liter. Never tried. Um, those guys, unless they're like pairing off, they might get very violent towards one another. Sixty-five. Sixty-five. Okay. Does running a phosphate remover, like GFO? make water cloudy it should not that wouldn't have me worrying about other stuff i mean perhaps if it wasn't rinsed properly but no i can't even think of that every time i've used gfo it did not make the water cloudy a rag alive is like the live said yeah 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 if, if it were me i would start with the with the substrate that you like and then seed it with other things This is 66? Yes, 66. Okay, thank you. Uh, Francisco C. I have a 55 gallon reef with two clownfish. They do not produce a lot of waste. Should I shut off my protein skimmer? No, I wouldn't say so. I think that there's no reason to really shut down a protein skimmer um, just because you're anticipating a lower nutrient load. I think that it, it, they provide a great buffer for pretty much anything down the road. Why do all pinwheel micros look the same? Not sure. Uh, Chris, can I travel there and buy corals directly from you? Yes. We're, now, we're not technically open to the public. Uh, there's no open walk-in hours or anything like that, but we do have visitors by appointment fairly regularly. Okay. Chris, I live in Florida pretty close to Worldwide Corals, but sometimes you guys have way better corals. Oh, thanks. I appreciate that. I mean, I think that, uh, that Worldwide Corals has really nice corals, in fact. Um, we saw them at MACNA, talked to them for just a little bit. Um, yeah, there, there's several like good premium places that are kind of springing up and it's cool that you have one locally like that t5 versus led which do you prefer 
Definitely T5 these days. It's not to say that there won't be an LED fixture that we like down the road quite a lot, but right now it's definitely more heavily skewed towards T5. We're actually making halfway decent time. This is interesting. <laughs> We've been on for roughly an hour, it seems. Number yeah, it's nice to, to, to be able to shop locally for a lot of stuff, I agree. So a lot of times um, folks here don't realize that like Tidal Gardens is in Ohio at all. We, we get this a lot, but people assume that we're, we're in um, California or something like that. For Tattoo Dancer 91 is using a frag tank as a quarantine tank also a bad idea. Um, unmedicated of course. Well, one of the, the nice things about having a quarantine system is that you're able to isolate and treat. So those two things are kind of doing two different functions and also if you were to have something diseased in your frag tank wouldn't you then worry about all of your propagated frags then contr contracting that disease? That's kind of the, the worry that I would have. Or if you're thinking about um, just quarantining fish in it that might actually work out because even though the systems are connected you would think that the the like any parasites that are currently living on the fish would make its way to the display tank that is a hundred percent possible but here it's very strange like i said we have different tanks attached to a single sump but all of those tanks are very different from one another. For example, you might have like an algae outbreak, a very specific algae outbreak in one, and it'll only be in that tank. It's, it'll, it's like this little 30 gallon tank off by itself, and only that one. It shares the same water as everything else. The water gets turned over X number of times per hour. Doesn't seem to matter. It also is just, has a, has a, a problem unique to it. So I guess in, in a pinch you could use your, your frag tank for quarantine for like fish or something like that but generally speaking you kind of do want to have two different purpose built tanks for that uh, let's see serenity's journey why don't you use fancy names and coin corals because we are completely out of ideas for that sort of thing we have nothing left so if at all possible we use names that other companies have come up with. Ideally, some other people would name all of our corals for us. <laughs> like in, a, in a perfect world. That's my dream. Like I think every other store, seemingly, is all about like branding their stuff. It'll be like, you know, name of store, such and such coral. And even if they know the name of the coral, it doesn't matter. They're, they're about to mix it up now. And they just like they just go remix on everything, and they're gonna like you know flood the market with their brand, and cool. Everybody, you know, you do you. But the way that that we kind of approach it is, we actually want to be discovered on Google first and foremost, and we don't necessarily want or care if it's gonna be a Tidal Gardens such and such coral. Like that doesn't interest me. What interests me is when you type in such and such coral now into Google that Tidal Gardens is the first entry. That's like my number one goal. So ideally, all of these names would be taken care of. Because again, after you've seen like thousands of corals, naming that many, it's not that fun, not that fun. Uh, James, why do you think Zeovit tanks never seem to grow large SPS colonies? I don't even know if that's true. I think I've seen a few that have, um, but then like right now, right this moment, I don't know anybody that's using Z of it, so 
there's that too. Chris Hendrick, you have some beautiful quotes. Thank you very much, Chris. Uh, where in Ohio? We're in Northeast Ohio. We are in Akron. Copley. Same thing. Kinda. <laughs> All the Copley people are like, we are not Akron. You're basically Akron. You're Akron on Google Maps. If I, if I type in my zip code, it auto-populates Akron. So there you go. Uh, what's the highest par you'll run on any one system? Is it true most corals available in the hobby prefer the 250 to 300 range at most? Yes, I would agree with that, Scott Lopez. Um, generally speaking, most of these tanks, they're under 150. Is vinegar dosing safe? I don't know. When whenever we try to do like the, any kind of the, of the carbon dosing, where it's vinegar, whether it's um, whether it's vodka, it or even like going like full on aquaforest, it went poorly for us. Like every single time we tried it. So clearly, it's it's just not something that that's worked out well for us here. Um, I'm sure that other folks have done just fine with vinegar, but it's it's a, it's a little harsh. There, there's smoother ways to do it. I think that like the Red Sea stuff. Um, is a little smoother, Zeovit's a little smoother, Aquaforest should be a little smoother. Uh, let's see, Roscoe's Reef with Scott. Dan, do you have ever used Acropower? And if so, any thoughts? Um, if we did, I don't quite remember. I mean, we have it here. We have it sitting in the thing, but we don't use it like enough to really notice a difference. There's here's the problem with with doing stuff in a greenhouse. Uh, if you see if you make an observation, it could be the result of a dozen different constantly changing factors in here, and so it's like it's hard to say. We used Acro Power, and it did blank. It's really hard for us to say that about anything. Um, Sometimes it's like plainly obvious. We did this, everything died. That sort of thing. That's easier to tell. But if you're talking about, oh, this kind of changed color, kind of, sort of. Mm, harder to say for sure. Do you get offended when big YouTubers stream at the same time as you do? No. Like, <laughs> YouTube is getting to the point where uh, they want you to stream every moment of every day. So I think, if anything, you're going to run into a situation where everyone is streaming at the same time that I do. It's that's going to be more typical than anything. I mean, YouTube wants to replace television. So they're, they're actually putting a lot of pressure on YouTube creators to always be producing content. Like, if you want a big YouTube channel, the formula is you make a video every day and you live stream for every moment that you're not actually making a video. It's crazy. So if you want a life, don't be a YouTuber. <laughs> Long story short. Okay, James, would you consider running a macroalgae filter on any of your s systems to help with pH balance to a lesser extent inorganic nutrient control? Um, for us, we really haven't run into any issues with pH because essentially we're an outdoor building. I mean, all of the um, air in here gets flushed out every second. So our pH, like, yeah, things aren't necessarily like great chemistry wise all the time, but our pH is always spot on. Um, but in order, in answering your, in answering your question, um, 
yeah, I would definitely consider using macroalgae as a form of filtration. How important is feeding corals? Francisco C. Any general foods that all corals like? I don't know about all corals, but we start with a slurry of different types of seafood, ranging from krill to mysis to rotifers, cyclopes, that sort of thing. And I definitely can tell when corals have benefited from feeding. Uh, certain corals are kind of tougher to feed, so um, I wouldn't be in a huge hurry to keep trying to feed those guys. But um, just the other day, we've had these um, we've had these anemones, these mini carp anemones, for years, and they're about two inches in size. Ben decided to I'm just going to feed these things a piece of krill every single day, like clockwork. And within a, a couple weeks, they're four or five times as big. And so as soon as I saw that, I was like, oh, I really feel bad that I haven't been feeding these guys more this whole time. I feel like a bad parent now. But yeah, I mean, if you can feed and, they, if, and if those corals do eat, I would recommend feeding. Jeremy, do corals have a settling in period? They don't grow at all sometimes for months on end, then suddenly decide to start growing. Yes, I think that is definitely a thing. In particular, I see that with zoanthids a lot. People always ask me, how long will it take for this thing to double in size? And that really depends on that initiation period. So you can totally get into a situation where it won't grow for like 12 months. And then suddenly, it'll just take off one day. So it's kind of hard to say one way or another. But they, it definitely does do that. Is there a negative to having your pH at 8.4, 8.5? Mine get there at nights. Isn't it supposed to be 8.3? I mean, isn't that like practically perfect? Bjorn Chung, my RBTA, rose tip bubble anemone, just fully split this morning. What are the, the to do's and not to the do's and don'ts while healing? Should I leave them in the tank? Yeah, I would leave them alone. In, in fact, right now, as they're kind of stressed, I wouldn't do anything with them. Uh, professional fish keepers, are you using the C200 now? How much do you love it? So I love the C200. I'm not currently using it. This is the C100. Um, so part of it is like these, these are capture cards. They don't recognize the signal coming out of the C200. Um, so I was like, oh. So there is a, this wonky workaround that I think might work for me to get a signal out of the C200. But um, the other obstacle is that the C200 is a very hot camera. It has like, you know, some pretty extreme ventilation systems and whatnot. And it really doesn't like mega hot weather. And currently it is mega hot here and we are in a greenhouse. So the C200 will probably be like, nope, shutting it down. I'm gonna save you or save myself from your bad decisions. And we're not doing this. So in that sense, the C100 has been a very, very nice thing to have. And what lens? This is the Canon, yeah, as Ben said, it's the 100 millimeter macro. This is the macro L currently, and there is a circular polarizer. Ignacio Costa, what do you think of using a two bulb T5 fixture on a 48 inch tank with LPS and softies? Or should I go with a four bulb fixture? I would go with a four bulb personally. It'll give you a lot more versatility. Um, the light output, it wasn't gonna kill you using just the two, but I think that you'd probably be happier with the four. All right, thanks Sigi, take care. We'll talk later, I'm sure. <laughs> Lots to talk about.
Uh, do you, uh, Eric Webster, do you have any purple Montipora coming up? Um, we might. We might. We, we did pass some. So if you wanted to scroll back a little bit, uh, there was like a section of Monty's, and I do believe there was some there. But there might be more coming up later. Like, I, I realized that, like, when we were looking at the statistics, um, people only come in and out for a certain length of time. So we do have some, some corals come and go repeating wise. Now, we did start off the majority of the first part of this show doing zoanthids, but later on we're going to have a, a couple more spread about. That was more tank related than, than anything. My pH has been, so this is uh, Jerome again. My pH been, has been a rock solid 7.9. It's definitely low. Should I do anything about it if corals and fish are fine? No, I wouldn't do anything about it. Like, that, that, I think sometimes people uh, tend to try to chase numbers when things are going well. I think if things are going really well, it's time to chill out and just enjoy the hobby. <laughs> Don't go looking for something to tweak when everything is fine, I guess. Okay, Chris Miller. Hey, Than, what's your best advice for transferring coral and rock and fish to a larger tank? It kind of depends. Um, so are you moving from like like a house to a new house that has like a larger tank in there? Because if, if there's already a new tank already set up, I would just put everything right in. Just put everything right in. Don't even worry about acclimating or not acclimating <laughs> quarantining or anything if it's all already all your stuff serenity's journey are you hiring lol it depends can you I edit understand. video i might be <laughs> it really just depends on on what it is we're, we're, we're hiring for uh technically currently we're not but i think that um coming up here we will be looking for somebody that can do propagation somebody that can do like uh basic coral husbandry like feeding maintenancey stuff and yeah if you can if you can edit video there might be some conversation there specifically final cut editing <laughs> editing is hard uh, and, and I'm, I'm not nearly as good of an editor as i would like to be but it's very time consuming but yeah i guess first and foremost it should be coral feeding coral propagation basic maintenance that's that, that, that type of stuff. Ah, uh, Eric, yeah, it was gobbled up. Yeah, it didn't, didn't surprise me. Like, the Montes, for some reason, looked really good today. Uh, Kimberly Boyle, I bought the Purple Haze. I think it's encrusting. It is an encrusting variety, yes. 99. Alex Reyes, what's the highest level of nitrates a reef tank can tolerate? If I had to put a number on it, I would start really worrying at about, at about 40. 40 is not a great number to be at. Uh, how do you keep tube anemones? Um, how, f how often do you have to feed it? What par? So Frederick, um, we only have one. We keep it in very, very low light and we feed it like all the time. I think that, I don't know for sure. So don't quote me on this. They might be non-photosynthetic. But they're so active and good at eating that you can just basically feed it, kept, keep it fed all the time. And tube anemones are really pretty, but boy, are they weird. Like, we had to kind of constantly keep it um, isolated. And when it was around other things, it would sting them and really cause trouble. So we would, it would move itself slightly. And whenever I would, like, grab it to move it, it's like, it's like grabbing somebody's arm and having them just suddenly go, like, Ugh! It's it's the creepiest feeling because it's it's like it's strong. You can kind of like feel it. Ugh. Yeah, those guys are weird. So that's my that's my uh, my tube anemone, anemone story there. But yeah, low light, lots of feeding. Okay. By the way, whenever you see this sort of thing, and I I don't know if this is the first one that we've seen like this, but it's not. Ten dollars times five equals fifty dollars. It means that there's five available at ten dollars. Just in case there's any confusion there. Okay, let's see. Uh, 
Um. Okay, so Bjorn, he's looking to do SPS dominated, uh, Aqua Forest. I would say if you're gonna if you're gonna try to do the Aqua Forest thing, I'd say just say do the whole system. I wouldn't try to piecemeal anything and just start from the very beginning. Like the the last uh, tank video I did was of Will Holland's tank, and Will's tank is like doing great, and he does like 100% Aqua Forest down to the food, down to the coral glue, like. Everything is is aqua forest, and yeah, he seems to like it. Now, if anyone's asking me, some of this stuff looked a little starved. It could use a little bit more nutrient, you know, because it is, you know, in essence, an a ultra low nutrient system. But I think certain corals do kind of benefit from having some of that nutrient replaced. So I was like, hey, you know, this guy's looking a little, a little light. And so he's like, yeah, maybe I'll, I'll dial up the, the nutrient just a little bit. But so, again, if, if you're going to do it, go all in. Okay, Chris Miller. I've currently been running a 29 gallon for a year. I have all my future rock already cycled in a brute trash can. I was planning on bagging all fish and coral and doing the rock work. Uh, future tank is a 65. Uh, um, that could work, yeah. I, I would probably do, I wouldn't worry about bagging all the fish. I would just borrow a bunch of buckets just to make sure they don't run out of oxygen or anything. And by the way, this yellow acro so far is like the most striking thing that I've seen on this show so far. That thing looks awesome. Like I'm surprised that it's thirty bucks. <laughs> it looks really good. So 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 some acro lover is gonna luck out on that one. That's awesome. Chris Hendrick, what's the best way to get rid of phosphate? The most direct way is just going to be using something like GFO, something just to soak it up. Water changes is another option. Third option would be to grow uh, algae and harvest it frequently. Jake Andrade, how often should bleach coral be fed? You could probably try to feed it every other day, I'd say. How do you keep some nitrates for your corals without having algae grow and consume it? My tank is either with algae or ultra low nutrient with carbon dosing and algae less. That's interesting. Usually it's not quite so volatile. Um, you might want to take, take a look at herbivore options. I mean, that might just be a, a maintenance thing where you just need something to just to keep it pruned down. Like even, even for us, which we typically don't have a lot of algae issues. If we have a tank that simply doesn't have enough herbivores, we're gonna get algae. So could be could be something. And for some reason our acros are looking nice. Like that's pretty good. Little focus. There you go, thank you. Is Red Sea Xenia the shorter pom pom? I guess kind of like we used to have two varieties of it I don't think we have it anymore but one used to be a lighter color and was slightly larger and I think that was the pom-pom the Red Sea typically was like the a smaller more pink variety and then there's like an Indonesian one that's very long and brown colored we don't have any of that anymore Uh, James, do you guys propagate your bubble tips? And if so, do you let them split naturally or cut them? And also, do you feed them? We feed them a lot, but not like directly on purpose. They get fed, broadcast fed. There's hundreds of them, and they're giant now. Um, we just let them split naturally, and occasionally they like dive into a pump or something and get injured. It's just, I don't even know how many there are. I don't know how many we've sold. It's, they're in a 300 gallon tank, and there's a lot of them. Like. Half the mass that's in there is probably bubble tip right now. Casper Myers, yay, made it. Welcome. Glad you could make it. Uh, Jeremy, Jerome, <laughs> sorry, I did it again. <laughs> is it true that warm white lights grow corals just as fast, if not faster? I would tend to agree with that. Well, at least when you're talking about T5 bulbs, if you're talking about metal halide bulb, because of the way the technology works, um, 
blue versions of those bulbs don't have more blue they have less of everything else so when you're talking like a full spectrum bulb that looks gross and yellow it has more of every type of color spectrum so if there's any particular wavelength that that coral you have really kind of wanted it'll benefit from from that type of lighting um, I always tell that story about like the the 6500 Kelvin Iwasaki is a Japanese gross yellow bulb uh, that bulb would grow coral out of the water wasn't a nice bulb to look at but boy could it grow coral and if you wanted to you could set up a bulb like that run it for four hours a day while you're at work or something like that and when you when you come back you can have all your pretty LEDs and whatnot and you'd be like hey look how great my tank looks and it's just because you're growing it under this ridiculously uh, high quality inexpensive um, amazing spectrum bulb Ooh, let's see what species of anemones do you have we have some bubble tips we have some flowers we have some mini carpets we have a single what do you call it a single tube and then we have some other weird ones like Christmas anemones or something possibly they might not be though and those are not currently on the website or anything I, I heard Hawaii won so I'm guessing the government of Hawaii or something I heard Hawaii will not be importing anymore will that affect prices on anything it could I mean, whenever you, you constrict supply, that's going to happen. Nicholas, does acrylic egg crate can have negative impacts on livestock? Okay, so those are two different things. So acrylic is acrylic. Egg crate, I believe, is polyvinyl chloride. It's PVC, I think. Um, it can possibly... Because it could leach a little bit of like you know a little something chlorine that type of thing acrylic not so much um, it would be not very high on my list of concerns I guess we've used both we still use both currently okay Canadian fish and shrimp can too strong of an iodine dip kill LPS coral yes iodine is kind of toxic also kind of why it works so if you overdo it you could kill the coral unfortunately so you definitely want to stick with the recommended dosage so for example I think that like Lugol's iodine solution it's about 40 drops per gallon you don't really want to overdo the time dipping you don't want, want to overdo the concentration What is the best inexpensive light for LPS and below? Uh, I've had pretty good success with these, uh, just these grow lights from Amazon, these T5s. They're about $100. You can, you can find the video that I did on it, and I think I even have like an Amazon affiliate link that you can click on if you want to help a brother out. <laughs> okay. What number is this? Wait, what number is this? Okay, hold on. I must have been messing up big time here. Hold on. I must have messed up. Can you go to 113 again, please? Sure. I don't know what I was doing. Okay, so this is 113. I got caught up in all my talkie. Okay, next up, 114. Okay. It's a neon green Monty. Sorry for the confusion, guys. I have no idea what I'm doing. See, this is why somebody else should be a director, and I should just sit and talk to people. Okay, then let's go to 115, which is an orange plating. The heck was I even showing? Okay, and then next up is... Okay, so hold on. Here's where I screwed up. Right. Sorry, guys. Right around 116...
Okay, so this is 116. This is the camo, the purple camo Astriopora. So confusing, guys. Sorry. <laughs> All right. So 117 is a golden Leptoceras. There we go. All right. Now I'm back on track. All right. So professional. Gotta love live. Uh, Eric Webster, is the Idaho grape a plating Montipora? It is a plating Montipora, yes. Ian Reeves, I'm ready for a Halloween costume party. I am too. I don't have anything picked out. And by the way, uh, it's September right now, right? Late September. It is not supposed to be 90 degrees. I'm telling you what, if it's 90 degrees in late October, I'm not dressing up <laughs> at all. This is way too warm. Okay, so we're going to be moving on to 118, which should be an Ultra Leptoceras. Okay. Type 40. What do you think of the AI Hydra 52? I've never used it. We've used a bunch of AIs before. My favorite AIs are like super old. Whoa. You, you need to uh, plug in the, the cable better. Into the camera. There you go. It freaked out. No, sorry guys. That's not what the coral looked like. <laughs> it wasn't that nice of a coral. Are you seeing it now? Yeah. Time delay. Oh, Mad Hatter's Reef. Thanks so much for the $5 donation, dude. So this super chat thing is just blown up lately. It's like for, for two years, like nobody did any super chats and all of a sudden it's like, it's now becoming more of a thing. So thank you so much. I really appreciate it. That, that helps the stream out quite a lot. doesn't seem like it all the time, but trust me, every little bit helps when it comes to, to putting on a video uh, production. So again, thanks Mad Hatters. Cheers. You know, does anybody have a, uh, a thing? An opener? So, I've never had this beer before. This is, uh, is it Goose Island? Yeah, Goose Island Oktoberfest. You guys can see. Hopefully it's not awful. It's supposed to be dried apricot and toffee. It actually is kind of like dried apricot and toffee. So, so this is like how lazy I am. So I've been drinking water this whole time. And the reason I went to the beer is because literally I ran out of, out of water and there happened to be a beer bottle three inches away. So therefore the beer gets drunk. Drank. David P, first time watching from Napa, California. Love those Montes and Acros. Thanks for joining. One of these days I need to go visit Napa. There's like a very famous restaurant there called the French Laundry that I want to get into and eat their food. <laughs> there's, still a, there's still a few restaurants I, that are on my kind of restaurant bucket list that I want to try. <clears throat> Uh, Lyra Sorowin, if my Ultra Leptoceras is growing more vertically than horizontally, does it need more light? That's interesting. I've never heard of that happening. I'm inclined to say no, just because typically Leptoceras don't need a ton of light. Yeah, ours are very flat typically. Jake and Drod, it's 94 here and it's at night. Refresh my memory, are you in, in Australia? Where are you from, Jake? Either Australia or the Middle East? Casper Myers, are we getting another drunk Halloween stream? You might. 
it, the, the most likely drinking stream is always going to be the Halloween stream. Sinochus 2012, that sounds gross. It does, um, but it's actually not that bad. I don't know what that has to do with Oktoberfest, though. Traditional Marzen. Hmm. Nick Johnson, awesome. Do you do this live every month? We try to. Um, we so we've always said we do it live every month, plus special holidays. And that's kind of an inside joke because there's literally one special holiday we do. We don't do any other holiday except Halloween. <laughs> it's the only one. So oftentimes October sometimes has two live shows. Type forty. Thank you, man. Thank you for the five dollar donation. Good night. Uh, so he said, good night, Dan, and stream. Thanks for starting this early so we in Europe can watch it. Very cool. Thank you so much. So Type 40 was the first guy to ever put in a super chat. Very cool. Stool. Stool. What Montes are fast growing? If they're healthy, all of them are going to be pretty fast growing. I'm in Canada and it snows four days ago. I'm not that far from Canada. I could get to Canada in three and a half hours. I mean, it's like Windsor, but I can get there. <clears throat> the Christmas one was pretty fun. Did we do a Christmas live show? Oh, the antlers. Okay. Well, I must have been drinking during that one too because I didn't remember that at all. Uh, Stool, do you have any scolies in your shop online? Maybe, maybe not? No. We must have sold them all. We'll have to get. Dude, man, we have to get more scolies. Like, I, I grimace. Like, scolies are expensive for me to acquire. Like, when it comes to, like, getting scolies. It's like four figures, typically, and I'm like, damn, damn, and like we can't propagate them or anything, and we, we, we get them because we have to have them on our site, but damn, they're so expensive, and, 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 it's, and, it's, and it's kind of bad for, all, for everyone, it's like, then, then it's going to be like expensive for you guys, but it's, it takes a huge chunk out of my budget whenever it's like, ugh, time to fill up on scolies. One twenty-eight. I think you should stream as a pirate in October. So I have that that, that pirate squid hat that I always wear. The, the, actually, last year we got a um, like a full body shark suit. The problem is it was, yeah, it was hot. So speaking of uh, inclemently hot weather, it was hot last year in October, and I just remember like cooking in that thing. Like no, no, I'm gonna pass out if I if I'm stuck in this thing. But other people wore it occasionally. Like if uh, if like I remember Lawson came in, he 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 wore that for a moment. Suzanne came in, wore that for a moment while while on camera. Is. There is green. Okay. So I, I missed it. Do you know where Jake Andrade is from? Did he, did he say Jake Andrade in chat? Because I, I asked him where he was from. Because I think he might be f from someplace in the Middle East or something, or possibly Australia, Kuwait. Okay, I, I knew it was something like that. Yeah, he said it's the ocean temperatures are blazing hot. Uh, Frederick, there's a green orange fluorescence growing on my rocks. Could be a lot of things. Um, could be algae. There's certain algae that, that fluoresce like that sometimes. 
Are there going to be any Euphilias today? Uh, don't think so. I think uh, if we did have any, we would have passed them up already. Ben, were there any? No, there weren't. Abel Valencia, how about clams? No, no clams. Um, we don't do well with clams, man. We kill so many poor, unfortunate clams. And I, I, if, I, if I just suspect anything, it's probably the way that we do maintenance here. Uh, whenever we dip corals in um, stuff like Coral RX, I think that might be adversely affecting clams. Having said that, we haven't done a lot of dipping, not a ton of dipping lately. Before, we would do it like all the time, right? Remember, we used to like, dip like 50 trays of corals. Not so much anymore. Ricky Ricky, are there any zoanthids in the sale? Yes, like the first 50 corals, first 60 corals are all zoas. You can go back and scrub through that content and eat your heart out. Um, we, we will be having some more later perhaps, so keep an eye out for that. So M. Just got a three head size Euphilia for 20 bucks. That's really good because that is much less than you would have gotten uh, something similar wholesale. Euphilia corals are very expensive now to acquire. So that's why we're always trying to scope out people that have, that have like propagated them and stuff like that. It's getting them wild caught is pretty rough. And they're fragile too. Like... You spend a lot of money per head, and then several heads could die. It's it's rough. <clears throat> so need help making a DIY refugium. I don't know if you've ever seen this guy's channel, but it's called King of DIY. He does like a lot of different types of projects like that. You can get some ideas um, from him, I'm sure. I haven't seen like a lot of the videos on his channel before, but um, he covers a lot of different types of things like that. So yeah, look look to that for inspiration, and also just look at um, other people's tank uh, like reviews on YouTube and see kind of like how they've done certain things. So if you see how a particular person had implemented something like a refugium, then go about figuring out how exactly they did that and, and try to do it for yourself. Just come to Burma, Than. It's really cheap here. <laughs> it's funny you say that. I'm, I am trying to get a trip to Burma. Like, I haven't been to Burma since I was three years old. Like, I don't know if you knew, like, I don't know if you knew this or not, but I was born in Rangoon and we left Burma when I was like three years old and I've been like lately it's it's becoming more of a thing where I want to to head back a couple of my like some family friends had gone back and and they're doing well and I, I'm, I'm genuinely curious about visiting now I no longer um, I no longer speak the language but I can understand Burmese pretty well so yeah I'm, I'm very interested in doing some diving eating some food yada 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 One thirty-six. What sort of par and flow do you keep your bubble tips under? Right now, they are under just like two um, AI soul blues, I think. Like, and the and the and the lights are hung a good three, four feet above the tank, like very high. Yeah, it's. Not a lot of light, but they're getting like some, some greenhouse ambient light. More than anything, I think they're getting fed like crazy. How much flow? Quite a bit, because in that tank is like a, is a tonsy powerhead. It's like the biggest one, the, 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 like the $600 giant one. So it's a lot of flow. Jerome, why aren't chalices sold as Oxypora, Echinopora, or their real names instead of just chalices? Um, it's it's weird, isn't it? There's like 20 different corals like that that are all under chalices. For example, um, shoot, which are those blue ones, Ben? 
No. Lithophyllin. Lithophyllin are not similar to any other chalice, but they're lumped in as, as though it's like, oh, it's no big deal, that's just a chalice. Like I said, there's probably 20 different uh, genera of corals that make up chalices as well, with all different care requirements. Um, are they necessarily more difficult or easier than, than one another? Fairly similar in that regard. We don't really do anything special to take care of, of different types of chalices, but I do understand your frustration with that because they're not that similar. They just all got lumped in there out of laziness. And then there was like this price boom, so you wanted everything to be a chalice, and that might have had more to do with it than anything else. For a while there, chalices are what, I guess, fancy mushrooms are now is they, they just like were crazy cost no object and then I realized that there's still some very expensive chalices out there but there was a time where like everything that could be remotely called a chalice would be called a chalice just to get that money little history lesson for you so that's probably why you have like this, this glut of one category of corals it just makes no sense <clears throat> you should visit Bagan and Napoli Beach should be on your list. Yes. I would like that, especially Bagan. And I heard that like a lot of like the the shrines and stuff like that got damaged by an earthquake maybe like last year or so. But I mean it's I, I mean every picture I see of that place is like ridiculously postcard beautiful with all like the the hot air balloons and stuff like that. So the rest of you guys in chat, if you are interested as to what we're talking about, it, it is worth a Google image search. Search for uh, B A G A N and and Yangon or 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 yeah, just, just search for Bagan, and you'll see like it's usually like temples, jungle, and the sky is like filled with hot air balloons. It's awesome. Yes, I would definitely like to, to go there. <clears throat> Billy Pipes, what's up? Glad you could make it. You are late, sir. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. It's a, we, yeah, we, we've been streaming now for about an hour and nearly two hours. But welcome. Glad you could make it. What's my favorite coral? I don't really have one. <laughs> Not exactly a fun answer, but it's true. I don't really have, have a favorite coral. There, there's some things that, that, that are kind of interesting here and there that I like, um, but no. I, actually, if I had to pick up one coral that I really want to do very well, we got this amazing red and yellow Blastomusa merletti. And I would be slightly crushed if that one for some reason didn't do well here, because <laughs> it is awesome. And it's not, it's not, we're not selling it yet, it's not for sale. It's going to be awesome. I'm sad, everything on your site is more expensive because I'm Canadian. What? Well, I think you'd be bummed because we don't ship to Canada. Oh. One forty-three. So this guy, I like a lot, especially under like the the actinic. This thing in particular just lights up, and it's got like three or four different colors going on. I bought another green bubble tip anemone a couple days ago. It split two days later. Very nice. Eric Webster, how many people does it take to run a live stream like this? Technically, you could get it done with two the way that we have it set up. So one person is operating a camera, and then one person is just behind the computer doing this, doing just all the, all the talky, interacting stuff. Um, we have one additional person that's kind of like more for assistance, slash doing all the stuff in chat. Um, ideally, we would have me in a completely separate place not doing the directing so that like so when you see like the 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 corals uh you know the the labeling change and stuff like that um that's done manually <clears throat> so it would be cool 
if somebody would just do that part so I don't like mess up and be like hey wait what number are we on that sort of thing so like just just now for example I just did that by hand um, and so it's it, it is kind of distracting to kind of go back and forth back and forth back and forth but it's not bad like bare bones we could do it with two um, if you if you weren't like doing a, like a selling show where you're like you know showing coral after coral after coral after coral and you just wanted to like show a tank or if you if you got really clever with it and didn't necessarily need to have the corals be live you could set it up where you just have different video clips of the different corals right and you could just play the different clips so like you could just have yourself doing all of the uh, just all of the different you know overlays and all of the different video clips so one person technically could do it all that'd be a lot of work <clears throat> 147 okay so these are some redactuses very popular uh, Abel Valencia, what do you think about the new Neptune Calc Alc Mag Auto Titration System Checker? I only heard about it like third person. <laughs> um, like heard from a guy, from, from a guy, from a guy. It sounds neat. I was at Magna. I didn't talk to him. Probably should have. Um, it sounds very cool. I, I wonder if it scales up well. That, that's, that, that would be my concern for me because uh, a lot of times certain technologies work really great for smaller systems. They don't necessarily scale up to a thousand gallons like I would need it to. Switching to the other side? Switching to the other side, Michael? Yes. Okay. All right. We're going to take a little bit of a break here. Here are the rules for the folks that don't really know uh, what the heck is going on. Uh, real quick, Jeremy, will we ever see a 4K stream? You might if I'm at somebody else's place and if my broadcasting software can support it. So currently my broadcasting software, I think at max, it does 1440p. Um, and I would probably have to load all the graphic files ahead of time because I don't think that too many capture cards do 4K particularly well. We'll see. Anyways, I will be right back. I'm gonna use the bathroom. Too much of this stuff now. And I'm back. Lawson, why are you trolling me, Lawson? Okay. Okay, so we're going to one, four, oops. Oops, 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 I messed up already. I messed up, guys. Hold on one sec. 148. It's not 149. This is 148. There we go. My bad. I'm good. So that's the Christmas Sephastria, which will probably need to get moved because it's, uh, it's probably bickering with that guy right next to it. Chris Craig can hear you peeing. <laughs> I hate that that's becoming a thing. I'm 
what you heard was not pee. <laughs> Lawson, we need to talk costumes. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll think of something, Lawson. And we'll get you and, and Suzanne on, on the stream for more. Because like, we found a way to do like the, the green screen like lengthwise to like have more people on it. So we can definitely do that. Okay, so broke budget reef. I'm trying to buy stuff, I bought the live sale shipping, it's still trying to get me to buy shipping, adding another, okay. So you need to check out as with local pickup slash live sale. So, because uh, otherwise it'll automatically add shipping. Um, if you happen to have already paid shipping twice or something, don't worry about it. We provide refunds for all that. It happens a lot. <laughs> more, more than I would like, just because look, it's a free website. It comes with some limitations for being kind of free. So again, when you're checking out, if you've already paid for shipping once, just check out as, as live sale. That way it, it doesn't charge you shipping. Uh, would, oops, <clears throat> would you prefer a tank? This is from Tattoo Dancer 91. Would you prefer a reef tank with many different corals crammed in or a tank with fewer corals where they can grow large and not worry about space? Um, that's a good question. I, I personally, just for the sake of the corals, like to give them as much space as possible. Visually though, there's something to be said about a tank that's just filled with coral. And you can kind of look at, at the last two tank re video reviews I did. Um, look at Rico's tank, jam-packed. Every flat surface covered with some coral and then having other corals grow out from a mat of clove polyps, that sort of thing. And then you have Will's tank, a newer tank in the works. Those corals are going to get larger, but have a lot of room to grow right now. Good and bad to both. But again, I think that like visually, it's like a more mature tank looks spectacular. When can you ship to Canada? We're not looking to do international shipping for a good while now. It's going to be, it's, it's a mess. Eric Webster, $15. Thanks, bro. I really appreciate it. Well, thanks for the hard work today. Beers for the entire live stream crew. Cheers. Thank you so much, Eric. <clears throat> When it comes to people in Canada wanting these corals, if you guys wanted to set up some sort of thing, like an import-export thing, where you'd basically be taking possession from us and then using your own export license to get it into Canada with your own import license, and then getting it to your store somehow or wherever somehow, that could totally be done. It's just hyper difficult. That process of import export is so rough. But I bet some of you guys are like legitimately close enough to drive here with a giant truck, load it all up with corals, drive it to the fish and wildlife office, which by the way is six hours away, and then get it through customs, get it through fish and wildlife and export it correctly and then imported on the on the Canadian side correctly it could be done but now you kind of see why it's a mess ah title gardens is telling me super chat is not available in Malta what gives I think like different uh, different countries have different laws regarding that sort of thing it might only be available in certain countries for a while there I don't know if, if there's anybody in chat from Germany but there was a time when no live streams were possible in Germany because of the broadcasting laws there. So you need to have like a broadcast license to do anything in Germany. They're like all YouTube live excluded. So 
it might change, but thank you so much for even considering it. I appreciate, like, I definitely appreciate it. Super chat has, why you no watch LCS? I am so out of the loop. I'm so out of the loop. I watched my first LCS, uh, or it wasn't even LCS. It was, um, it was the Korean one, LCK, where uh, my team. I'm such a front runner. SK Telecom. No, not SK. I guess it is SK. Yes, SKTT one, right? Um, they they lost in the, in the finals. I think to Longju Gaming, something like that. I'm so out of it. I don't even know who, who the, what the champs are or anything. I don't even know who's good. Who's good in North America right now? I mean, is it still like the, the same old like TSM and then pick random leave the next three teams? I don't even know. <clears throat> you know, I think that the D Detroit might actually be a point of entry, but I don't think it has a fish and wildlife office. One fifty nine. Okay. If you were setting up title gardens today, would you set it up in a greenhouse? That's a good question. I probably would not. Um, there are a lot of really good benefits to setting up a greenhouse. There's a lot of good benefits to using a traditional building. One of the big benefits to a greenhouse is that it can be done for a lot less, strange as it might seem. And now that we're a little bit more financially flexible, I think I would go more all out for a traditional building. Um, having said that, it almost doesn't matter because both will work for you. It's it's a lot more important that you can actually sell stuff. That's the hard part. Doing a building, growing coral, keeping stuff alive, it's a challenge, but it ain't that much of a challenge. Building a business, that's a challenge. TSM is still good, but the roster changes all the time. Best wishes from Germany. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I was never a TSM fan. <laughs> I was, when it comes to NA, I was always a fan of Dignitas, which is like garbage for as long as I can remember. But, so if I, if I had an NA team, just so you know that I'm not a total front runner, it would be Dignitas. It, 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 are they even a team anymore? I don't even know. Um, and, and over in Korea, it's all SKT. Even though they also lost in their final. Uh, how do you get electricity to your greenhouse? Very expensively. You basically, well, just how do you get any utilities? You trench it all the way. So it's 300 feet of trenching to get a, to get any kind of utility lines here. Um, so uh, Jerome, being in a greenhouse, how much of the light actually comes from the sun? Is it mostly from T5? So when we first started out, we didn't have any lights, zero lights in here. We didn't know what we were doing. Nobody knows what they're doing. I mean, this sort of thing isn't really done. So we relied on the sunlight for everything things didn't do great some things did okay over time we added more and more and more lighting initially it was just supplemental lighting just so we, we could show off color like a lot of times we'd have people over and we'd be like trust us this is pretty it looks brown and yellow right now but trust us it's pretty and it is so we got like some some actinic lighting just to show off some color later on it's like we need to provide consistent coloration or consistent lighting so that they don't go through as much of a fluctuation because of the seasons. As time goes on, it's less greenhouse and more artificial. And that's why I'm saying that if I was to do it all over again, we would probably use a traditional structure. Eric Webster, the greenhouse has to be hard to heat in the winter. It's the opposite. It's super easy to heat. Super easy. Uh, in fact, we have like uh, the, the radiant heating floors and everything like that. That system doesn't even come on. 
because of how well heated this place is. It'll come on maybe only about four hours in the in, at night on the coldest winter nights. Otherwise, the tank temperatures are, are fine with the other types of, of heating that we do. We, we directly heat uh, the tanks. So, no, super easy to maintain temperature in the winter. Super difficult to do so in the summer. Okay, next up will be 166. Uh, Cenotes, I've been growing Stylo and Pastelopora from you. Is there a lower light Seriatopora you would recommend? Um, we have what we call, I think it's like a, a yellow bird's nest. That's a good call. You could probably have some success as well with a bird of paradise. What systems or devices do you use to heat the water? Uh, we use closed loop coils. So it's like, um, it's basically a hot water coil. You get like a PEX tubing, which is cross-linked cross polyethylene, I believe. And just make, it's just plastic tubing. And then you run hot water through it. And then you run hot, and you just set that into your sump, like a big, like 100 foot coil of that. And it is very good at heating water. Very good, very, very good. Anton Venn, any advice on how to take care of tumen enemies? Um, only two things that I can think of. One, keep them well fed, and two, Try to keep them away from everything else because they're they're very aggressive when it comes to like reaching out and stinging stuff. One sixty nine. Any chance of opening up a second location over here in Cornwall, Ontario? Honestly, um, if we were ever open up a second location of this sort of thing, it would be in Singapore or Tokyo. Like some place that, like well, we are in Copley, Ohio. Okay, and I joke because like, you know, I've got some friends and you know, we were talking about like clothing and stuff and I, I went over to their house and they have like a dry cleaning service that comes and gets their dry cleaning and I'm like, in my house, I am more likely to get a lawnmower service that comes and picks up my lawnmower before I would find a service to do dry cleaning. It's like I am in the middle of nowhere, okay? And so like if I was ever to do this again where I would be like, location specific where it's like okay i need to pick a like a market i really want to enter i would pick a market that is ginormous so if we're talking canada maybe toronto i would consider toronto but yeah like i i would like for if if this is kind of pie in the sky type stuff. But if I was to pick a second location right now, if I put a gun to my head, say, pick a place, it's going to be Singapore. Pick a second place, it's probably going to be Tokyo. Pick a third place, it's probably going to be Seoul, Korea. <clears throat> One hour from Montreal and Ottawa. It's not too bad. Four hours from Toronto, there's too much competition. I compete with the entire US. <laughs> I'm 
trust me, when it comes to competition, it's like that is that is part of it. If if you are, are running or if you're doing business and you and competition is the most scary thing, it's competition is beautiful. Like so I mean I think that like we clearly directly compete with a lot a lot of places that you've heard of. Behind the scenes, I think I'm cool with like all those guys. Like worldwide corals, cherry corals, like, you know, we all know each other. It's like it's not like some like you know bitter, angry, sniping people in the background that, that I know of. Like everybody's generally pretty cool about that stuff. Ben's being silly over there, but no. But there isn't. I mean <laughs> they're just simply there's not. I mean, I wish I could, I, you know what, I wish there was drama because that would be like good for my YouTube channel, but there's just not. I mean, it's like for the most part, when it comes to like the, uh, the other coral sellers, they've been really cool. So, okay. Eric Webster, Green Montipore Smoke Goodies. Really interesting. Can you talk about it? Well, in terms of care, I, I wouldn't do anything differently with those guys. Um, it's just a very interesting growth pattern and an interesting growth coloration. Like, I would say that right now is the best it's ever looked in our systems. I mean, it has like a ridiculous green glow to it, which is atypical. Usually it's more brown than green. Now, one thing that um, you do have to watch out for, always keep in mind, of Montipore eating nudibranch. For whatever reason, if you are susceptible to that sort of problem, which is a bad problem, by the way, um, which wrasses take care of, they love to crush Montipore Smongotis first. So if you're going to run into that problem, it's going to be with that coral. So keep an eye on that coral for those little white nudibranchs. Nick Nathu. Hi, Ethan. Hello, Nick. Right. Thanks, Lawson. I will talk to you later. Speaking of Japan and all, and all this talk about, about Tokyo, Lawson and I are going. It's going to be fun. Looking forward to it. I'm going to eat a lot of sushi. Uh, Zan Gao, it's going to be high temps in the 90s next week. Do you think the corals will ship okay? Uh, honestly, yes. We, we, do, we do cold packs. And the boxes that we ship out in now are about an inch and a half thick. They're either an inch or an inch and a half thick, depending on which box we use. Um, Cold pack plus inch and a half box, which is like practically pharmaceutical grade, it doesn't care about 90 degrees. It just doesn't. Now, if you're if you're very concerned, it's cool. We 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 can ship whatever day you guys like. But would I be worried about 90? Not really. It it is a cold pack away from being off my mind. And if something does go wrong, it's all guaranteed anyway. So you're good. One eighty one. Canada is different with a bunch of money hungry a holes. Well, that's too bad. If I want to mix my own coral food, what do you suggest I add? Fish, shrimp, clam, squid. Yeah, Ben. Ben just outlined like what kind of stuff that we use. Squid is a nice addition. It's messy, but it's a nice addition. And different types of eggs, they don't really last very long, but even it's all frozen. Give and take on that, but eggs are also very healthy, like different types of roe. What types, what are some fish that live in fresh water and salt water? Off the top of my head, I can only think of two, salmon and bull sharks. <laughs> Scats, monos, maybe. Well, those are like, those are like brackish. Yeah. Yeah. And by the way, on 182 there, I did see a little, that little Aptasia. He'll be taken care of before we ever ship that out, in case anyone was worried. 183, okay. Christopher Craig, my Rainsford Gobi killed the Mons. It's poor nudie bronc problem. Now, that's very interesting. So we've been relying on mainly on Melanaris wrasses. They get fairly large, though. So a Rainsford Gobi tends to stay relatively small. So if that was something that could handle Montipore eating nudibranchs. That's quite a revelation. That's very interesting. Yeah, thanks for sharing. Do you, do you have any do you have any wrasses in your tank, Christopher Craig? 
because if it's if it's no Rasses and just that Rainsford, that's super interesting. Like I said. So Salt Empire Corals. That is not to say that I don't have haters. Trust me. We're on YouTube. YouTube's got some haters. So that's kind of like part of it. But as far as like the industry itself, there really isn't. Or you know what? Maybe there are people like like industry folks that do hate us. But I honestly don't even know who they are. So, and and and, and probably neither do you. Like I, I'm talking about the brands that you know about. Good chance I have met them. Good chance we're probably fine. It's not like it's it's not even there's no drama there that I know of. There's no drama on my end, I guess. I don't know why I'm backing all the way down to that. It's like I, I've had no indication that there's drama. Molly's. Okay, Molly's. That's a that's a good one too. Say what, Ben? Oh, there's some eel, you say? Hmm. Yeah, I, I could only think of two, salmon and bull sharks. Dave's the interesting. Still going, then? Yeah, still going. Still here. I'll tell you what, though. I, I hate to admit it, but alcohol helps. It just sucks, but it's true. Wait, well, I think I missed 185 because I, I was messed up. All right, so one, hold on, 185. Let me just look it up here. Sorry for the confusion, guys. I've been drinking. Okay, 185 was this guy. Okay, purple and green, blasting with a Wellsy. Okay, 186 is pink and green, blasting with a Merletti. Okay. All right. All right. We'll figure this out. We'll get through this. Uh, Jerome might have asked, what's the fastest, slowest growing acro you know of? Uh, tough to say. They, they, they're all pretty fast growing if they do well. I mean, acros tend to be a very, very fast growing coral. Typically the ones with like the larger branches compared to like the small, tightly branched guys. Uh, okay, Rusty Shackover. What are the best corals to attract the ladies? I'll you. I'll do even better. Okay, you don't even have to buy coral. This is the best part of it. What you need is bubble algae. Bubble algae attracts the ladies. Like if you, if you don't believe me, take your girl to the fish store. Okay, and I guarantee it. And walk her by some tank that has valonia in it, and she'll be like, ooh. What are those green things that look like pearls? And it's like, uh, yeah, about that. <laughs> they love, seriously, the girls love the Valonia. Evil doggy for life, for life. What's the best way to get rid of Aptasia? Um, in my opinion, the best way, it's best and worst. It's a copper band butterfly. Best at eating Aptasia, worst at trying to keep up that butterfly alive. Lots of live rock, lots of additional feeding. They're kind of finicky. <clears throat> the rains were just hover above the Monty laying in wait. Wow. I have to I have to consider Rainsford gobies now cuz seriously those 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 nudies are just the worst Dave's not my nano is a chick magnet <laughs>
Haley F. Welcome. Uh, wait, did we pass by some mushrooms and rhodactus yet? Well, we are looking at some some mushrooms now, but there were some rhodactus earlier. Yeah, there's been some rhodactus, and there has been some what do you call it? Some recordia yuma, just a couple. Tips for growing Xenia and GSP faster. Uh, you probably don't need any help growing Xenia faster so much. Uh, green star polyp, you can probably accelerate by providing more flow. That's one of those things that um, that not only spreads better with flow, but the, the flow keeps them cleaner. And I guess and that also, again, it's like that feedback loop helps to, to get them to grow. Wait, is this a 193? What? Wait, no. Go, go ahead. One. No. No, that's not 193. Move over one to the. No, no, no. To the other way. Other way. That is 193. Okay. One. 194 is the chalice. Pay child support or buy corals. I might be a little bit biased here, but I'm going to go with buy corals. Take that for what it's worth. Or better yet, or better yet, why not both? <laughs> you know, I was on a live stream, Ben. Those two are just two different memes. Why not Zoidberg and why not both? Are two different things entirely. You know, like combining the two makes no sense. I was, I was like, I was like, why? Why was I doing that? <laughs> yeah, why not Zoidberg? Why not both? Yeah, pay your child support and buy corals. Ca Canadian fish and shrimp. Is it better to have high flow through your sump with minimal power heads in the display or lower sump flow and more power heads? I actually like a lot of turbulence in my sump, um, but that's to kind of like get it agitated to get try to get it more into the skimmer and things like that. But you might run into getting detritus and stuff like that shot back into your tank if you do that. So, I mean, there is some downside to it, but personally, I like to keep everything in, in suspension. Questionable parenting advice from Than. Actually, it's not it's not technically parenting. It's more like uh, court ordered legal obligation advice. Any big differences between GSP and Encrusting Gorgonians? They're pretty similar. Um, obviously, they're different types of corals. Their care requirements are actually pretty much the same, I would say. One nine eight. Who's live streaming next? That's a good question. Not me. I am all done. I'm all kinds of done. I'm gonna hit the happy hours. For all those cheap chicken wings and stuff. <laughs> gotta keep gotta keep your gotta keep your pleasures real simple. I want those cheap happy hour wings. <laughs> Say what? Yeah, you know, that's true. Yeah.
almost to the end here. How many do we have total? One, twenty, two twenty, two twenty. 220. 220. And we're back to where we're back where we started with the, with the Zoas. Yeah, Kimberly O'Boyle. A sale goes to two two zero. Rico. He's always streaming, isn't he? It's like you can always catch Rico stream. Don't forget the crew. Yeah, they need wings and beer. Yeah. <laughs> they they actually did get wings earlier today. We had we had we had a, we had a cookout to start this show. It's kind of nice, even though it's like ninety something degrees out. I always thought encrusting Gorgonian was just a fancy name for GSP. No, it's it's actually a Gorgonian. Yeah, it's it's actually a type of sea fan. So I was planning on doing a live stream last night, uh, just to do my like my Friday Q and A thing. I was so just dead beat exhausted, so I'm like, can't do it. It just it's just not happening. But I, I really would I really did want to do it yesterday. Live streaming, it's uh, it can take some time, it can take some effort. Rusty Shackleford. Where's the absinthe, though? So the absinthe, uh, I'm assuming that's for absinthe. Uh, the, the absinthe live show is a uh, Patreon perk. So if we get to the to, to hit our milestone for that, we'll do, we'll do the absinthe. How do you maintain your wonderful eyebrows? It's all CGI. There's like a plug-in in my broadcasting software just draws that stuff in. It's great. It's like, it's like an Instagram filter to make you look like a puppy or something. Two o four is very upset looking, and I don't even think it's a madrasis. I think that's like it's a type of ganiapora. Just bought a Mystic Monty from you. Should I put it in high? Or or low in an 18 inch tank with LEDs. I would always recommend starting it off lower and then moving it up uh, slowly. That's kind of like my always thing, my, my go-to thing because the last, the worst thing you can do is just blow it out with like too much lighting. Than uses Snapchat. I tried to for a little bit. I was at a, a friend's party for something. Maybe it was like a birthday party or something. And there were these kids there. They must have been like, you know, seven years old or something. And I asked for like a tutorial on how to use Snapchat. And they just like grabbed my phone and, and within like 30 minutes like showed me like 50 different things you can do in Snapchat that I honest to God would not have figured out on my own. <laughs> it's like that's how you just know that you're like an like, you know, old man guy now. Is that it's like, oh God. I can't figure out Snapchat and these like five-year-old kids can like, you know, make you vomit of, vomit of rainbow or something like that. It's like, uh. Oh dear in pubs, what did you do for a living before Coral? I did business law stuff. I was managing Ohio University's intellectual property portfolio, doing stuff like starting companies and finding investments and stuff like that. In other words, much less interesting than, than drawing and selling corals on the internet. What's your opinion on air-driven nano skimmers as opposed to ones with small needle wheels? Thanks for answering all our questions. So here's the thing about air-driven pumps. If you keep the basswood airstone clean, they work really nicely. Like, really, really, really nicely. Problem is, it is kind of more of a maintenance hassle than I think it's worth. Um, but if you were diligent about cleaning your skimmer, that is absolutely an acceptable... That's an absolutely acceptable way to skim any tank. 
It doesn't have to be a nano. It could be a thousand gallons. If you have a big enough skimmer with a big enough air pump with a big enough air stone, it'll work. It'll work really well even. Kids are great at tech. Yeah, you are not kidding. Like, I think I'm pretty tech savvy. Not like I used to be. Does Coral RX do a good job killing nudies or should I get some bear? Honestly, DJ Loins, neither one is going to do it. Like, is it going to kill them? Kinda. Is it going to handle your problem? No. They're not, they're not all going to die. They're not going to kill the eggs. It's When it comes to dipping, I've seen nothing that handles nudie Bronx. Nudie Bronx do not care about your Coral RX. And we, we actually have Coral RX Industrial, which is like the stuff that's in oil that's not even like water based. It's like oil. And it's like 10 times stronger than regular. And we use like 10 times the recommended dosage. And that doesn't even eliminate that problem. The only thing that's eliminated that problem for us is fish. Um, are Astrea snails the best snails for algae control? Uh, they're up there. Um, so all of these snails kind of have their good and bad. Astrea snails, sometimes they'll die from starvation and weird stuff like that. Mexican turbo snails, they're big bulldozers, but they do a great job uh, handling algae. Trochus may or may not be the best at algae control, but they oftentimes can flip themselves over, unlike Astrea snails. And we just got a, a shipment of them, and they did not ship well. So there's also that risk. So, tough to say. Two eleven. It's funny, like the last thing that uh, that we have. So, so Ben and I are contradicting each other on everything. It's like needle wheel is better. Could be. Um, then call RX. Yeah. Okay. Second one was definitely a typo. I was like, oh, we did not have that good a success. <laughs> yeah, I think that you know, like needle wheel. Not only do you have to replace the wood blocks, but you could take them and you on sandpaper. You can like, it's it's a lot of effort. It's a lot of effort. We should do like a, a cookout here, like another cookout. We, we, had, we had a cookout like earlier today and I'm like, we should do a cookout. Oh, but actually have a, actually have a barbecue. That'd be hilarious. Like, like, like a live studio audience cookout barbecue. You have to hard, you have to have a hard time listening to my voice over like the sick beats though. <laughs> It'll be like an EDM dance party. <laughs> oh no. <clears throat> It'll be a coral rave at night. Two fourteen. Two fourteen. So at least I'm glad that these Gorgonians are kind of cooperating. They're looking great. You can never tell the Gorgonians. Sometimes they develop like a waxy film and they just stay closed for like a week or so, but these guys are all nice and open. Last question, I swear. How do you have Vrag Zoanthid safely? My friend got some in his eye and had to go to the hospital. Um, if you're really paranoid, glasses, gloves, that sort of thing, uh, Nico, salt water or fresh water? I'm a beginner. Um, well, what you're all looking at is salt water. So this is all reef aquarium coral stuff. Uh, if you wanted just to start out, 
I don't know if you should start off in fresh water. I think it's about the same between fresh and salt to be perfectly honest. But then again, I haven't had fresh water in a very long time. So hold on now. Okay, let's see. Craig Smith. Hi from Great Britain. Welcome. What's the best control for Aptasia? Yeah, I mentioned this earlier in the, in the stream, but it's like, I, I think the best way to control it is a copper band butterfly fish. Unfortunately, copper band butterflies are more difficult to take care of. They require more live rock. They require more in the way of like doting and feeding and whatnot, but they do a great job for Aptasia. Two seventeen. It's Neftia. All right, guys, start asking your last bit of questions. We're almost at we're almost at the end. And again, thank you guys so much for attending, and thanks so much for those super chat donations. Like, I think this is like the first actual live uh, sale where we actually had a whole, uh, like uh, any super chat donations come in, and a whole bunch of them came in. So that's awesome. So yeah, very very cool, you guys. Always appreciate all the support. It's 218, okay. Nice big red sign in arena. And yes, and of course, thank you to the Patreon crowd. <clears throat> I'd be remiss to mention them. Okay, next up is just a couple of uh, random things I'll just toss up there. Uh, this is Codium that we've got. This is 219. So if you did, guys wanted just something for your refugium, you can try that. And 220 are some multicolored rose bubble tips. We've got 10 of those available at $50. So if any and all of those things sound good to you, go for it. And that does it for the live show. We're at 220, guys. So real quick. Thank you so much to the Patreon crowd. So Patreon again, it's the little kind of the, the, the online tip jar for YouTube creators. These guys have donated at the $5 mark, so they get a shout out on this show. So thank you very much to Phil, Mark, Robert, Steve, Ryan, Dave, Nate, Nancy, Jeff, Samuel, Matthew, Mark, and Travis. So last minute questions, guys. What do you guys got? Have you ever had a frog's Rough for can't talk. Frog spawn recede off its skeleton. Do you know why that happens? It's called polyp bailout, and when euphilia do it, or when a, a catalophilia like an elegance does it, it's a bad, bad sign. They typically don't recover. Um, what would you feed a fishless frag tank? Mostly zoas. Hmm. Wouldn't be in a huge hurry to feed a whole lot. You might want to try some of that plankton type powder, either Coral Frenzy, um, what's the other one? I forget, they, they, they've mentioned it before, but it's basically plankton. Uh, Aaron, M-E-L-E, um, -E, Meal, Mele, are 24K Leptos har hardly? Hardy, I think they are. I think they are. I think all Leptoceras are pretty hardy. Purchase my corals. Thanks, Dan. Thank you so much for purchasing. I haven't even checked, like, you know, what what, what sold and whatnot. Hopefully something did. Uh, shame about Aaron not doing Friday live stream anymore. Oh, I didn't I didn't notice that. Hopefully, Craig Smith, I will be able to do what why okay. I, I, I don't know, but why did he say he's not doing the live stream anymore? Probably because he probably has a life or something. I don't know. But I hope to try to do a live stream on Friday. It's a lot harder than I thought it would be, but I'll try. Ian Moss, name is Danny from South Africa. Love the show. Thank you so much for coming. All right, Rico, catch you later. Thanks for joining. We'll touch base.
best and worst refugium macroalgae. Uh, there really isn't any best. I'd say that the best are the kinds that you like the most, the, the, that are the prettiest. I mean, obviously, people are going to be like, what about performance? And you're going to point to Chado and stuff like that. I like the ones that are pretty. I like the red ones, like um, Dragon's Tongue, Dragon's Breath, that sort of thing. Refroids, yeah, that's what, was, that's what I was talking about earlier. All right, guys. Again, thank you so much. September live show is over. Appreciate the follow. I'll give it a thumbs up if you actually like the content. And the next live show is either going to be a regular live show in October earlier or it's going to just be uh, carried over into the Halloween live show. Very likely it's going to just be the Halloween live show, just know knowing by our, how our schedule is going. So anyway, uh, subscribe, hit the bell, all that nonsense, and thank you very much, you guys. See you next time.